The Midwestern part of the United States has been a major destination of Czech immigrants since the 1850s. By 1914, Chicago became the second largest Czech city after Prague. Czechs have their neighborhoods, schools, churches, theaters, a strong Sokol organization, even a bohemian Wall Street, and of course, several breweries. What they still don't have is their own independent state back home. However, after 300 years, this is about to change. The declaration of war on Serbia by the Austro-Hungarian Empire leads to protests among Czechs in Europe as well as in Chicago. They strongly oppose fighting their Slav brothers. Czech Sokol gymnasts took down the double-headed eagles, symbols of the Habsburg Empire, at a major anti-war rally in Chicago's Pilsen Park. Tomasz Gerig Masaryk, a 64-year-old Czech professor, philosopher and politician, champion of humanism and democracy, foe of anti-Semitism and defender of women's rights, opposes the war and calls for action. Our Czech soldiers leaving Prague show their anti-Austrian stance. They're punished for what I, as an MP, was preaching. Could I do less than the simple soldier citizen whom I encouraged in anti-Austrian views? Professor T.J. Masaryk with two key aides, the Czech Edvard Benesch and the Slovak Milan Rasislav Stefanik, form a so-called mafia with the objective of creating a new Czech and Slovak state. <music> Professor Masaryk traveled to the U.S. in 1902 to lecture at the University of Chicago at the invitation of its president, William Harper. The visit was sponsored by Chicago industrialist and philanthropist Charles Crane. Masaryk returned in 1907. Both times he spent substantial time in the Midwest, addressed various influential U.S. forums, and toured major centers of Czech immigrants. Now in 1914, he turns to his American friends for help. Charles Crane opens an unlimited bank account to cover immediate needs. The message that Professor Masaryk launched in the campaign for Czech and Slovak independence was received with enthusiasm by his countrymen in America. A new revolutionary body, the Bohemian National Council, coordinates fundraising efforts across the U.S. from Chicago. Vojta Benesch announces that donations will reach $1.5 million. A poorly dressed man came to the office with his wife and daughter. I suspect that he came to beg for help. However, he gave us his savings book with $270, claiming that it would find a much better use here. This was everything he had. Hundreds of such examples are the most beautiful chapters in the story of our struggle. The leader of all Czechoslovaks, Professor Masaryk, declares, if we have an army, the Allies will have to take us seriously. U.S. entry into the war in April 1917 opens the gates for Czech and Slovak American volunteers to join either the U.S. Army or the Czechoslovak Army in France. 
More than 40,000 Czech and Slovak Americans have already left their families to fight for Czechoslovak independence. Many of them are members of the Sokol Organization, which has been one of the pillars of Czech social life both in Europe and the United States since the 1860s. Founded on the motto, Sound Body, Sound Mind, it promotes the physical fitness and intellectual development of its members. Charles Crane helped Professor Masaryk secure approval for forming Czechoslovak units in Russia from Czech and Slovak prisoners of war. More than 70,000 men have now gained control of Siberia. The world is impressed. Czechoslovaks present a strong case for their independence. The Czech and Slovak Americans help sustain Czechoslovak troops in Siberia, providing more than half a million dollars in cash and material aid worth $300,000. Czech and Slovak American women tirelessly packed more than 2,300 large boxes. May 5, 1918 will enter history as the greatest day in the history of Czech America. 200,000 people came to greet Professor T.J. Masaryk to downtown Chicago. The Czechoslovak leader seeks the support of the American public for his nation's independence. I believe that your work, Professor Masaryk, will be crowned with the success that it deserves, says Harry Pratt Judson, president of the University of Chicago at the rally. President Woodrow Wilson will meet the leader of the Czechoslovaks, Professor T.G. Masaryk. Introductions were made by Mr. Charles Crane. Crane has been the long-term supporter of President Wilson and major contributor to his presidential campaigns. He now serves as an advisor to the president. Masaryk is the outstanding Slavic leader of the world, says Crane. Charles Crane's son Richard serves as secretary to the U.S. Secretary of State Robert Lansing and is also a firm believer in the Czechoslovak cause. U.S. support of Czechoslovak independence proved to be of key importance for the faith of the Czech and Slovak nations. On October 28, 1918 marks the creation of the new country of Czechoslovakia. U.S. flags can be seen at the celebrations in the country's new capital, Prague. Tomáš G. Masaryk expresses gratitude on behalf of the new country before his departure for home as the first Czechoslovak president. Our nation will always be grateful to America for her award and sincere sympathy with our cause. Our new republic will forever consider the great American Commonwealth her elder sister. The trip home was my first time off in four years. I thought about how it all happened and felt happy. Dear God, we did succeed after all. Czech and Slovak Americans continued helping their homeland after Czechoslovakia was born. In November 1918, the National Tax Collection brought in $330,000 during a single day. In the spring of 1919, ships of love carried clothing, food, and other aid in the value of six or seven million dollars to the new country. The Czechoslovak ambassador to Great Britain, Jan Masaryk, and his first lady, Frances Crane, returned to Czechoslovakia for a few summer days. Jan is the son of Czechoslovak President T.G. Masaryk, 
Frances is the daughter of Charles Crane, bearing a nickname of the Godfather of Czechoslovakia. Mr. Crane continues to support the New Republic. On the occasion of the country's 10th birthday, Charles Crane is to present a monumental cycle, the Slavic Epic, by the world-renowned Czech artist Alphonse Mucha, as a gift to the city of Prague. All three other children of Charles Crane have a special link to the country as well. Richard became the first U.S. ambassador to Czechoslovakia, John serves as a personal secretary to President Masaryk, and Josephine is depicted as the Slav goddess on the Czech 100 crown currency. Good morning, a fine day, and I see the new film. As yet I didn't see and hear it. A nice, a great invention of America. I'm sure not the last one. The Europeans can learn a bit of you Americans. For 20 years, Czechoslovakia was one of the most successful democracies in the world. However, the Munich Agreement cast a dark shadow over the country's future and forced the head of the republic to resign and leave for exile. Dr. Benish accepted the offer to serve as a professor at the University of Chicago under the auspices of Charles R. Walgreen Foundation. Just as it did for Tomasz Garrig Masaryk, the university also extends its helping hand to the second Czechoslovak president. It is one of the greatest pleasure of my life to be today on the American soil. Edward Benish, former Czech president at the Chicago University Roundtable, says the republic still lives. But I declare that the independence of Czechoslovakia was not crushed, it continues, it lives, it exists. Edvard Benesch decides to act again as Czechoslovak president. His University of Chicago salary helps finance his campaign for the recreation of Czechoslovakia. Jan and Alice Masaryk, son and daughter of the first Czechoslovak president, join President Benesch in his efforts in the United States. Thank you, Mr. Warner, for your kind words of encouragement. The work that you and others in Hollywood are doing is very necessary for the survival of the democratic country. Believe me, sir, and you, my friend, it's now or never. Czech and Slovak Americans have contributed ten to fifteen thousand dollars each month to President Benish's campaign to restore Czechoslovakia. During the first two years of the war, they collected three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Many sacrificed their lives on the front of World War II for the free and democratic future of America, Czechoslovakia, and the world.
Hi, I'm Jim Lovell. I took the flag of the country of my ancestors on my Apollo 13 mission all the way to the moon. I'm glad that the Czech flag will fly high over Chicago. I know I've learned just how unique it is to be Czech American, Bohemian American, and Slavic American. And I am honored to be a living, breathing continuation of those diasporas. That hyphen daily reminds me to honor the journey of my immigrant ancestors. I feel that Czech heritage every time we play. It may be why I work so hard. It, it may be why I will, will not give up. Uh, there's something in me. My dad had it. He had the eye of the tiger without knowing it. And I think that's something uh, us Czech people have in common. I've always been very proud of my Czech heritage. And being from Chicago, I'm glad it all began right here for you. In my career, I want to say that I've always preferred drama. But I want to wish you a drama-free next hundred years. Same for our country, too. So have a wonderful time in your celebration. Czech Americans and other friends from Chicago, the Midwest, and other parts of the United States have stood by the Czech nation for more than a century. Goodbye and thank you. Thank you.